Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for the Aries New Moon occurring on April 5th. I'm a little late getting this up because I've been really rocking out with those um, Equinox readings. You got to, till the end of, till the first Monday, till the 8th to order that, and then it'll be taken off the roster. But this is very much, um, kind of goes hand in hand with the Equinox because that, that's when the, the Equinox, of course, is when the Sun moves into zero Aries. And this energy is the new moon in Aries. So Aries energy is the first sign of the zodiac. It's the astrological new year. It's kicking off its new beginnings and it, it packs a punch, it packs a wallop. We've got the sun and the moon here. That's what the new moon consists of, of course, and that's at 15 degrees. So midway through, but still the sign of Aries is like, uh, we're there. It's, it's this, uh, I keep seeing it packs a punch, it packs a punch. Chiron has joined it. That's part of the equinox uh, energy. And then we also now have Vesta in there. So we're moving away from the Piscean energy into the Aries energy and starting a new cycle, starting a new year. It's all opposing palace, so it could be important that we incorporate partnerships. Because Aries are very fired up, get up and go, charged up. Um, you know, so it's there. They, there's that part of it. But there's also um, the need for partnerships to be involved with the uh, Vesta there. Sometimes, you know, it's good to bounce things off of other people. It's good to, uh, that adds to the energy, that adds to the, um, to the mix, to the recipe, to the final outcome. Because you can only carry the torch so much on your own. You know, Aries is a fire energy, and you carry that torch, you ignite that fire, you get that flame rolling. Um, but you will have to enlist the help of others at some point. Others' ideas are going to matter, and there's a there's a play, there's a back and forth, there's a energetic uh, play going on that um, adds to it. Um, this is all squaring the Saturn, so we've got this Aries Capricorn square energy that we experienced so intensely for all that time when we had the Pluto Uranus square. This is going to make, could bring up potentially and kick off, you know, some of these issues. This was all the political climate that we've gone through because the Capricorn or Saturn energy, of course, if you've never seen my videos, this is the, you know, the rulership is the same vibration. So 10th house, Capricorn, Saturn, all the same vibration. Um, the Saturn or Capricorn energy is all about the old school establishment, the powers that be, the things that have been, and because we have the South Node up here, it's you know the tried and true, what's been happening over and over again, what we've always done, this is how things have always been, this is the way they're always going to be, and we don't like change. We don't want change. We don't want disruption. Well, guess what? With Pluto going through there, you, know, you can wish and want all you want. That alone is going to bring about the change and, um, you know, changes in the... In, in, um, in the environment, I guess, but changes in um, the structures. Saturn Capricorn energy is the structures. It's the building blocks, the foundations. So the change will come. Change going to come. Yeah. And the Aries energy can butt up to that. A square uh, brings conflict. It brings tension. It brings conflict. So the Aries wants to, Aries, this is the old person. This is like, uh, if you think of the symbols of the new year, and traditional, we've got the old man and the beard and then the new baby. That's the old man and the beard, and this is the new baby. And the new baby wants to do everything new, but they also can run amok, I guess. You know, they don't always know best. They don't have the... There's something to be said for the Capricorn Saturn energy and the fact that there is wisdom. That there is... Uh, wisdom can be... Um, you know, uh, there's wisdom in experience. The elder uh, do, do carry wisdom. They do have, um, but they have something good to say. But not too much of either is never going to be good. You need that youthful uh, exuberance. You need that youthful enthusiasm to, you know, let's get get off our butts and get things going here, uh, and ignite that flame of excitement and everything. But you can you you're just running blind half the time. You, you know that. 
you, you don't want a kid just running out on the street. You know, you got to teach the kid, look both ways. You could get hit by a car, you know. There's, so there's a little bit of both. But too much of the old, this can also become, um, the negative of this is that it could become dogmatic. You know, my way is the only way that's good and you know nothing. So there needs to be a compromise. That's where the Libra energy comes in. Compromise on both ends. And inventive, because Pallas is, is an inventor, Pallas Athena. She was a warrior, but she was also an inventor, fashioned new tools. And in the sign of Libra, Libra always wants to get along and um, bring about peace and understanding and compromise. So there's this cardinal it's the cardinal signs that are being activated with the nodes and this energy and these are the cardinal signs and the cardinal signs mark the changes of the seasons so we're still in we're changing of the seasons we're changing of the guards um, we still have this big thing going on in Pisces over here and Mercury has turned direct Mercury Neptune can go a couple of few different ways. Okay, Neptune, of course, is all dreamy and psychic and spiritual and really kind of out, can be kind of far out there energy. And Mercury's in the mind, calcu doing calculations, talking, speaking, the wheels in the brain turning, the gears, you know, the, the gears are turning. So it's, it's kind of muddled. It can be, the downside is it can be kind of muddled. It can be kind of, um, it's not a great place for Mercury to be if, in a lot of ways because it lacks the clarity, it lacks the sharpness, it lacks the uh, alertness that's needed, that Mercury feeds on and needs, and Aries has a lot of that energy too. But with, if you use it, there's always a positive and negative, so you can use it, um, if you use it in a favorable way, you could really be getting downloads. If you already have a tendency like me <laughs> to be in that Neptune energy anyway, you know, you're already kind of in the psychic spiritual realm and maybe a lot of times when you're in that vibe, it's hard to articulate. You kind of can get lost in the dreamy and energy and, and that's why the downside of the Neptune vibe is even mental illness at times. People get so lost in that Neptune energy that they can't connect to reality anymore. Or it also rolls drugs and alcohol and people get so lost in that drug and alcohol induced um, vibe, I don't know what to say, you know what I mean, like the detachment of, from reality that they have a hard time getting back and getting in there. So this could be real productive in that way if you're already kind of way out in Neptune land here, that Mercury can help you to figure things out, to figure things out, to, to articulate what you're thinking, to get those downloads, to find those um, aha moments, to find those uh, vibrations, to find that swimming in that energy, and then here's like, let's take it to shore, let's take it to land, let's speak it out, bring it to the people, man. <laughs> Venus is right in with them, too, pretty close here. And Venus is, of course, creativity, you know. So if you're creative, you could be. this could be such a great vibe for creativity. You could really be getting those. Like, I get ideas all the time, too. I write them down in notebooks, and then I have boxes and boxes of notebooks. And now I have files and files on my computer, you know, or, like, song ideas. You know, I used to, um, I have my box of tapes, my box of cassette tapes. I write you know I, I record a little snippet and then record another little snippet and then when that side of the tape was filled i'd flip it over and i had these little snippets that would come to me i would record them and then pretty soon i've got a box full of tapes filled up on both sides you know and maybe if i've you know oh someday i'll get to it well it's cassette tapes that shows you how long it's been <laughs> that i never got to them you know it's, it's they're, they're my box of tapes that's always my symbol of um things that never get done, you know, or these ideas. Yeah, it's great that I recorded them on my little cassette player, but, um, and now, well, what's, what's turned out now then, and, or when I, when I get a computer, I was so, well, when I get a computer and I get my music software, it's all going to be different then, because then I'll be so easy to la, 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 la. Well, now what's happened instead of my box of tapes is I have a folder full of files, you know, <laughs> and that might be true if you're a writer. Maybe you have notebooks full of writing, but now you have folders on your computer full of, or your cloud, you know, full of, you know, notes and stuff. So, 
this is great for gathering that, but that's where the Mercury comes in because the Mercury is like, let's organize it, let's let's uh, work it out. Because you know, if you've ever written anything, you know, it's it, music, whatever. Yeah, it's great these broad up strokes, these great ideas, but then when you get down into the nitty gritty of actually writing the book or actually working on the arrangements, that takes some this kind of work. That's very mental, and it takes you know if you're writing, you have to rewrite it and rewrite it and work it out. And it's 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 it can be really arduous and hard. It's it's hard for me. You know that's the part that's really hard for me. I wish I could uh, had like an editor I could work with, and just hand it all to them like help help me. <laughs> but this kind of energy, you know, this Mercury. You could think of Mercury as your editor or your producer, or your, if you're into music or whatever you're into, any kind of creative idea. It could be anything, or you know, just like um, you're planting your garden. You know. Um, I don't have any room in my garden. My mine are so filled. But um, you know, if you're planting a, a garden space, well, I like this flower and I like this plant and I like this plant. But then you got to figure it all out. You know, well, this needs shade. This needs sun. This needs this. This needs that. You know, these work well together. You know, they, these pollinate each other. Da da da. Oops! What happened here? We lost our we lost our screen. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so this is the thinking. This is the planning it all out. This is the getting it all organized. Again, it's not great in Pisces. Um, it'll be better when you get into Aries. That's when you probably start doing it. But this is the time to take all these Neptunian ideas and make sense of them and do something with them. Because you don't want, you know, don't die with your song still in you, right? You know, you don't want your box of tapes collecting dust and yeah, you recorded it, but nobody's ever going to hear it. What good is that? You know, that's how I got started on YouTube. I started just, I go, well, I don't care. I don't care if I'm going to get, back then it was, you know, get signed to a label or whatever. I don't care if I ever get signed to a label. I don't care if whatever. I'm just going to put it out there so it's just, it's out there. You know, at least it's going to be out there. And um, maybe I'll never make a dime off of it. Maybe nothing will ever come of it. But at least it's not sitting in that box of tapes collecting dust or in that file folder. So that's what the value of this, how you could use this and harness this energy even to use it for whatever. It doesn't, I'm just using those examples because that's something that I'm familiar with, but it could just be anything. Um, dream note, if you do a dream journal, maybe go back and analyze, go through and look at your dream journal. I find that really valuable too. A lot of times I'll, uh, at the end of the year, I'll go through and that's all digital for me now too, but I'll go through and just read through some of them. And it's, when you get a little distance from it, it's amazing how much stuff... Um, I told you the stories before about, like, right before my brother died, and I had this intense dream about me and my mother having to cross this bridge, and um, she couldn't make it, you know. I, we had a, we were, it was this horrible storm, and we were, you know, and, and there were these, like, leech, giant leech things that were on, kept attaching to my body, and I just, I, I, cause I, just, I was telling her, come on, come on, and I kept pulling the leeches off of me, and I got to the other side, and, and she wasn't there. And my mother died short right after my brother died, like a year later, because she, she couldn't cross the bridge. And because of all the upheaval of my brother dying unexpectedly and all the stuff that happened, and it was just, you know, if you've lost someone, you know how that goes. Um, I never even thought twice about that dream, and then I went back and saw that dream. I'm going, oh my God, look, at it was all right here, you know. That bridge that I had to cross was to getting my brother's death and life, what would life would be without, without him. And my mother couldn't get there. She just couldn't get there. So go back and, um, you know, look at those dream journals if you do that kind of stuff. Or I, I have, I mean, I write down all kinds of crazy stuff <laughs> with my notebooks. Just little synchronicities and weird stuff that pops in. Because, again, maybe you could put it together and make something out of it, make sense of it, or something. It's good to, you know, use your mental mind on these kind of abstract dream, psychic, spiritual, creative vibrations that Mercury being interjected in there could really um, help you, help you have some cognitive understanding and realizations in your brain. So it's not just all a bunch of muckety muck, Neptunian energy, dreams and crazy dreams and, you know, oh, I had this crazy dream and then you forget all about it. Here it was this whole thing, you know, unfolding, and, th and that'll happen a lot. Okay, so what else is happening here? Oh, Jupiter is going to be, it's real close. It's coming up to that, um, once every 12 years, it's, it's directly conjunct the galactic center. 
So there comes these big downloads, you know, you're going to get, it's very possible to get these huge downloads at this time. Um, I believe the Galactic Center is this big portal that we can get downloads through, that everybody can. So then when Jupiter comes through, whatever Jupiter comes in contact with, and Jupiter's in its own sign too, it's in the sign of Sagittarius. So it's Jupiter and Sagittarius, it's its own sign, it's more powerful there. Jupiter could really enhance that and really open that up and we could really have a lot of enlightenment and a lot of downloads are going to be huge. Let's just put it that way. Downloads are going to be huge. Um, because it's in the sign of Sag and in the ninth house and Sag and everything, this is about teachable moments. This is not only getting downloads from above, but again, it's uh, Mercury rules the third house. This is our mental mind and everything. And then the ninth house is uh, the broader perspective. Learning, growing, um, knowledge, teaching, spiritual enlightenment. So all of that could really come through. And as we look down here at this third house, Mars is there. So that kind of reinforces everything I was just talking about. Mars in the sign of Gemini. Mercury rules Gemini. So the same energy, right? And it's third house here. So... Um, Mars is get busy on Gemini stuff, just like I was saying. Organize those files. Get you know, Mars is going to give you the energy wherever it is. Mars in Gemini could also be make that phone call, write that email, you know, uh, make the communication. Get that, get on it. If there's somebody you've been meaning to call or write or follow up with, get on it. This is the time to do it. This will give you the energy and the time to do it. Uh, what else is happening here? The Mars is also sextiling Uranus. Well, not sextiling. Um, I forget what that is. In conjunct or something. Yeah, so it's making an aspect to that Uranus and Taurus. Uranus and Taurus is, again, kind of a conflicting energy, just like the Mercury and Pisces is. It's just not at home there. It's real different. Uh, but it, it can bring it kind of down to Earth, you know. That Uranus and Aries energy was kind of... It was a lot. It was a lot of... Because Uranus is just electric, it's out there, it's just, uh, it's, uh, it's electricity flying through the air and lightning bolts and it's just, just crazy. It's so, being in Taurus, uh, you know, it's kind of like bring it down to Earth, ground it, bring it into the Earth plane. Things could be stabilized, you know, we could have some stabilization with these next, uh, I forget how many years, is it maybe five or six years that Uranus stays on the sign? Maybe longer, maybe it's seven or eight. doesn't really matter, but these upcoming years uh, while Uranus is in Taurus, bringing things down to Earth, stabilization, feeling more grounded, using the Uranian energy, because it's so inventive and fast forward to the future, using that energy to solve earthly problems like, uh, you know, climate change and pollution and animal extinctions and you know tending to mother earth you know, the tending to mother earth the healing of mother earth you know wind technology definitely because uranus and aquarius is air energy um wind um air pollution you know we could come up with brilliant brilliant ideas could be hatched and um innovated during this time okay what else is going on yeah saturn squaring all that Mars is square and ascendant. Well, I don't care about that. Saturn, Pluto, that's been going on. Saturn sextiling Mercury, too. Yeah. So, again, back to this Mercury energy being so strong. Um, Saturn sextiling it. Ideas that you think of could be long standing. It could have relevance. It could be something in the world. That book that you've been working on, you could finish it now. You'd have the discipline to really finish it now, to where it would have a permanent place in our society or in the earth plane or whatever, you know. And now it's easier than ever. You can self-publish if you're a writer, you know. It's, it's easier than ever. So rather than needing approval from these big dogs up here, but sometimes that still helps, you know. Many people who are self-published would still like to get uh, published by an actual... <laughs> <laughs> publishing company because you have you have a broader reach that way that's the biggest um, benefit to that you know you have a broader reach that if somebody doesn't have to randomly f find you they have access to you know put your book in the hands of millions of people because they already have that 
established um, thing going on. You just upload it to wherever, you know, Amazon or whatever. There's other self-publishing uh, platforms now. People might find it, they might not, you know. <laughs> but there's a much better chance if you're dealing with the big ones. But that aside, if you don't want to give your power away to some big corporation, if you, or if you view it like that, if you view it as, well, I, w I wouldn't want to do that, I don't want to give my power away, um, it could still have a permanent place in society or in um, in the earth plane. You know, it, it wouldn't be the box of tapes collecting dust. It would be out in the world and have 3D reality permanence. I know the box of tapes has, uh, that's not a good, um, that's a 3D reality, but it's sitting in my attic collecting dust. Isn't doing any good. Um, or the files, the files sitting in my computer. You know, you could actually get it out there, you know, and it would be a real, tangible, real thing based in reality. Oops. Yeah. I mean, every time I do these, after it's done, I'll go listen. I don't listen to anybody else's until I've done mine, because I don't want to accidentally say something they said. And then I'll go listen to somebody else's, and they'll say, oh, yeah, and there's this, this is this, and there's this huge aspect going on, and I, I completely missed it, you know. It, it almost never fails, but let me just double check this. Mercury trying to know, Mercury conjunct Neptune, sextile Saturn. Yeah, I think I've pretty much covered everything, right? I think I have. Um, again, if you want to get this is uh, till the end of this week, if you're watching this uh, in the first week of April, you can still get that Equinox reading. And it's it's really, uh, it's okay that it's later, because it's for the whole season. You know, and this is totally part of that energy. This is like another little kick boost to it that's really empowering that new this new turnabout in Aries. The, the twelfth house is the end, and then we we're, we're born anew. You know, it's the endless cycles of life and astrology and time, and we're captive on the carousel of time, right? Yeah. So, yeah, if you're interested in that, if you're watching this early enough, it'll be up until, probably take it down the morning of the 8th, so you have until then. Um, it's just like this. It's just, if you like these videos, it's just like me, what you're used to seeing. I'm looking at this tablet, and I'm talking, but I'm talking about your chart specifically. So, it's it's what you're familiar with if you're interested, and you can find all that on my website through the Eye in the Sky or below. Um, I think this is about covers it. Uh, great time for new beginnings. Great time to pull these things, these Piscean things that have been pushed away or put in the closet or put in a box or just an idea that you just, uh, you're always thinking, oh yeah, that's such a good idea. I need to do something about that someday. This would be the time to work it out and then act and do something about it. Okay? Alright, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in, and I appreciate everything you do to support me and my channel, including liking, sharing, commenting, donating. Uh, I have a Patreon page now, too, if you want to check that out. You get some uh, content, additional content that's not available to the general public. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, you are love and beauty incarnate. Have a great new moon in April, and I'll speak to you soon.